So, Maka, you're at the game. What was wrong with Liverpool today? Um, well, I think if the managers are no, Dan, it's hard for us to say. They were slow, weren't they? They were lethargic. Fulham started the game really, really well with a good tempo. You expect that first game of the season, 12-30 game. But Liverpool just didn't match them early on, certainly in the first half. Didn't match them for intensity. Wanted to play pretty passes and were not clinical enough in controlling the ball and moving the ball forward. So a very frustrating day all around for Liverpool. But Fulham deserved it, didn't he? Deserved mm. to go in at half time. They work really hard and they capitalise on errors that Liverpool um, committed today. But, you know, all in all, it wasn't a great start of the season for Liverpool. How bad were they, Stevie? It's probably as bad a football as they've played. Regardless of results, you know, they've, they've played way better in lost games. This, this was, I mean, I, I only remember, I think the first goal that Nunes scored, that was the only bit of play leading up to that goal which, of course, was fortunate that Liverpool had in the whole game. Mm. I don't remember having three, four and five passes. Everything, they were losing the ball, they were giving the ball away when they had it. And it took them, it took them what, half an hour to actually get some sort of foothold in the game. So th there's, there's nothing to talk about. The, the only things we can talk about are, are the bad things. Right. And probably what summed today up was the fact that arguably the best centre-back in world football played like a schoolboy today. The, the penalty he gave away, you would see 12-year-olds doing it. This was Van Dijk on Mitrovic, of course, for the second goal. Yeah, Virgil van Dijk. He's got Mitrovic, who's collecting the ball maybe 35, 40 yards from goal, and instead of going and closing it, because Mitrovic is never running past him, he backs off and backs off into his own box, then gets himself squared up, and then dangles a leg. I mean, you talk about schoolboy from the best defender in the, in the world, no question. And it just shows you that everybody does make mistakes. Yes. But when, you're, when your main man's doing that, then that tells you what kind of day you're having. Uh, Frank, do you agree from one centre-back to another? Yes, well, he has to take a, a very uh, fast decision and uh, he opened the, the right door, I would say, um, putting uh, Mitrovic on his left foot. But he was on his... Uh, on his, um, on his heels uh, in, in a way that couldn't react, you know, and go forward. And, uh, yeah, he, he should have at some time stopped dropping and take a decision knowing that Alexander-Arnold is coming to, uh, to help him out. So, yes, well, I found him, and since a little bit since last season, uh, the Van Dyke that I know and we, we all knew before his injury is not there yet back. And... Uh, and um, I find him sometimes sloppy, sure that he can get it. That's the first time that somebody took, uh, took him on. But I think he was kind of sloppy, That's, it doesn't matter today. And that was, uh, yeah, disappointing. I agree with Stevie. It was all a bit sloppy, Marco. It's kind of a good way to describe it. Especially off the back of what we saw last weekend, obviously, in the Community Shield. You can clock referring to that. Did that give them kind of a false sense of security going into this tie? Well, it shouldn't do, Dan, to be very honest. It's the first game of the season. It's, it's against a team that's just come off from the Championship. Liverpool were big favourites today to get off to a good start. So, to beat Manchester City, who were dominant last year in the Premier League, the way they did it last week, in the style that they did it, they were quick, they were sharp, they were aggressive. It was none of that today. I don't know whether they took Fulham for granted, because when you looked at the Fulham team sheet, they didn't have a lot of names there that jumped out to you and you thought, wow, these are going to scare Liverpool, these are going to caused problems today. So I don't know whether it was a little bit of arrogance that came into the game. I honestly don't. But to have played like they did last week against City and then seven days later, yes, they played Strasbourg the day after and had a, didn't have a great result and they, they changed the team around and had a few injuries. But today, the starting eleven was more than strong enough. If they were on their day, if they could play like they normally do, and um, where they say normally do, you know, we've seen these type of performances as in good performances you know, they haven't been beaten in, in 2022. So this was, a, this was a big result for them, for Fulham today. And Liverpool just didn't get going at all. And that's the disappointing part because they need to find something quick because firstly, they're running out of bodies. They've got a friendly match tomorrow against Aston Villa, you know, behind closed doors. The under-21s are playing Manchester City tomorrow. So I don't know where they're going to get the players to play all these games. It's crazy, Stevie. Let's take it through, should take us through the first goal, the, the yeah. Mitrovic opener. Is there anything, for example, could Alexander Arnold have done anything against him there? <laughs> well, I think, you know, when you have a player like Mitrovic, 
when the ball stood up at the far post. Okay, well, this is a foul here on Henderson, yeah? Well, no but, question. But they didn't bring it back, obviously. Yeah, this absolutely. Far. There's no question it's a foul. Uh, referee doesn't give it, but then you still have to defend. You know, I guess we always talk about, you know, you stop it at source. So Robertson really has to try and stop the cross. After that, Mitrovic is going to be favourite with Alexander Arnold or most full backs in the Premier League. Here you see the foul on Henderson, it wasn't yeah. given. But you're not expecting Alexander Arnold to just go and win that ball. Right. But what you're expecting is for, for him to put a strong challenge on that will make it difficult for Mitrovic to, to do what he wants to do. What he did was he was weak and, and, and scared. He looked scared. He, he was not aggressive in the slightest. And so there was always going to be one winner and the ball was always going to be in the back of the net. Is that harsh, Macca? No, I think when you look at it, I think you expect him to do more. He's a world-class centre. Uh, he's, excuse me. He's a world-class right back now. So everybody has focused on his defending and, and and him going forward. But he needs to do something to stop Mitrovic just getting a, virtually a free header, didn't he? Whether he put, you know, whether he stands still, whether he grabs him, whether he he just you know tries to disrupt him any way. But in 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 theory, he didn't do anything. Mitrovic just come climbing over the top of him, of course, as you expect him to do and wins the header and powers it in very easily. So as a right-back, you always feel that they should be able to do more and they should be more aggressive and make it more difficult for them to get a header in. So I, I think that's fair. Mit Mitrovic is a, is a big lad, as we all see, and you expect him to try and win those balls, but you also want more Or you, when you see it, and certainly when you see it in replay and you slow it down, you always feel as if you could do more as a defender. Frank? Well, I think we have to make a statement. Uh, Alexander Arnold is absolutely fantastic when he has the ball and he's really poor when he has to defend. That's what it is. And uh, it's no offence to, to say that. It's just an evidence for me or it's just, it's just clear for me. And uh, we have so many evidence that uh, he, he doesn't do well when he has to defend. In that matter, it was very easy. He just had to stop a little bit to, to break and to make Mitrovic to break a little bit and to delay his, uh, his run, and he would have never gotten the ball. Uh, but it's like he knows that Mitrovic is behind him and put his body down, you know, to allow Mitrovic to, to put his header. That's crazy. M makes no sense for me. Uh, I, I don't understand. Maybe he's the only one who can explain what he wanted to do in that matter. Uh, positives for Liverpool? Nunez getting his first goal, obviously, <laughs> domestically, and an assist as well to boot, Stevie. <laughs> well, I'm sure Nunez got <laughs> Liverpool's man of the match, but quite frankly, he, scored, he got a goal and an assist, yeah. and he knows absolutely nothing about both of them. <laughs> because the first one, he completely misses the ball. It comes <laughs> come back off Tosin, hits him on the heel and goes in, and then the goal he sets up in, the, in inverted commas, there you go, look at that. And, then, and the one he sets up, is a miscontrol, but it's still an assist. So he's got a goal and an assist and has no idea how it happened. <laughs> Look at this. Oops, a daisy. And then <laughs> Salah puts it in. You've, you've got to think, though, that there's no way Liverpool could play this badly again this season. Right. And if you're going to do it, do it with 37 games to go. Right. Because if you analyse the whole team, the front three were rotten. They might have scored two goals, yeah. but they were, both of them were lucky. And they were... And they were, they were playing against Tosin and Ream. Tosin and Ream are not going to have an easier day for the rest of the Premier League season. Liverpool got completely outdone in the middle of the park for 30 minutes. I mean, completely outdone. Right. And then defensively, as we've been sort of concentrating on, they can't play defensively as bad again against anybody. I suppose those could be saying, Mac, hey, calm down, it's the opening game of the season, you know, they're going to find their rhythm soon, we know what they've done in the past, but the problem is in the past as well, Mac, they've lost a league by one point. This is why this could prove to be quite a big deal, because we know what Manchester City brings to the table. Yeah, of, of course, but I don't think we should go overboard. Yes, I think if you're a Liverpool fan and what you've seen last year and what you've seen of where Fulham have just come from the Championship, you'd say it was two points dropped. Uh, uh, that's all it is. I think you can't make any any big claims about um, about the Premier League. Of course, West Ham are playing Manchester City tomorrow. That's a difficult game. But I understand that there'd be a lot of frustration in the Liverpool camp, and I understand that there'd be a lot of frustration um, by the Liverpool fans. But you know, some of the the grand gestures and the grand statements of oh, it, you know, it's panic stations because they've dropped two points already. I think it's slightly ridiculous, to be very honest.
Given what happened at Wembley, Stevie, should he have started Nunez? Um, I, don't, I don't think so. I think he... Look, I think in all honesty, pro, Klopp probably thought that he would take care of Fulham with his side he put out. Right. Uh, and mm. with Firmino. And he probably doesn't think Nunez is ready yet anyway. And the fact that Nunez came on and made such a difference, he probably thought it would be a nice little thing for him to do the same again. You know, try and, try and, try and break Fulham, basically, and then put him on. And then just, just keep him surging forward. Now, as it turns out, he has surged forward, albeit I'm taking the mickey. that He knew nothing about it, but the fact is he's got a goal and assist. So that kind of worked out. If you're a Fulham defender, though, and you look at the team sheet, you're happier that Nunez isn't starting, aren't you, Frank? Yes, if you consider that Firmino is not a good player, but Firmino is a very good player, and he showed it. He's not, as, he's not, he's not been effective as, uh, as Salah and Mane last season, but I think he's, he's a very talented player, and you have to respect that. But whoever it could be, I think I'd rather play Nunez because he's not ready for maybe for the Premier League yet. It's what we thought before the game. Instead of uh, Firmino, who knows by experience what uh, he has to uh, to expect. So it doesn't make any any difference for for any uh, any defender, especially the Fulham defender. You have to know that you have to thread them because they're not. They're not warriors in a way. They 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 will, they will try to avoid contacts. Uh, they they players like that is how they're good at. Uh, but if you mean in a very good way <laughs> of football, if I may say, you know, you might have you might you could have a good game. What do you think, Naka? Um, well, I, I, I agree with Stevie, to be honest. I, I fully expected Jürgen Klopp, to, you know, with that, with that front three that he had, he would have thought that it was far strong enough to do the job against Fulham today. I don't think Darwin Nunez is this finished article yet. Yes, Liverpool have spent a lot of money on him, but he's a very much a work in progress. I think anybody who followed his career last year and the year before at Benfica and before that know that he, he made giant strides last year, particularly in the Champions League. But you also know that he's very raw, he's not the finished article, and he will improve at Liverpool. You know, he's probably not the player Sadio Mane was at Liverpool, but they're hoping that he will get there and get there very, very soon with the promise that he showed and the improvement levels that he showed last year. But we also know that it's going to be taking him time to, you know, to get involved in the Premier League, to take time to acclimatise, to take time to learn the language that his, his fellow um, uh his fellow football players can understand and, and and converse with him and then hopefully score the goals that Liverpool do. But, you know, what he did do when he came on, he looked a threat. Yes, mm. the ball was bouncing off him at times and some of the ball was, some of his passing at, at times when he first entered the field, he looked slightly lethargic as if he was getting up to pace with the, with the game. But I think for the last 20 minutes, he certainly looked dangerous and he gave Liverpool something that they haven't had before, certainly with Firmino on, on the pitch because he, he wanted to drop off too much. And today's game, I think, needed something over the top. And Darwin Nunez will give you that. Uh, we saw, didn't we, Thiago come off injured. Jurgen Klopp said after the game that it doesn't look good. Uh, you mentioned it, Maka, before. They're kind of running out of bodies in the middle of the park. Yes, they have. Because, the, yes, they'll get Naby Keita back very soon because he was only ill, I think, and he's fine. He'll be fine in the next couple of days. But people like Curtis Jones, Alex oxlade Chamberlain, Thiago... They're going to be out for a while, aren't they? I think we knew that. You know, some of them have got serious hamstring injuries. Thiago's didn't look good. He knew straight away. And that generally feels as if it's going to be two or three weeks. And it is becoming a bit of a worry. They're starting to lose players. And they're starting to lose players in that central midfield position. And that's never good for a manager. Yes, he said in his, in his um, after, after the game press comments that he's not going to panic. and He's not going to start looking for midfield players. But there's still a few weeks of the transfer window uh, open and to go. And if he still, if he has another injury or he's going to rely on only three players, he, he may have a problem. Concern? Yeah, I think so. Uh, on paper, having basically seven midfielders before the, before the, the kickoff, you, you looked all right. I would certainly question that they needed to sign a better option than what they have. You know, Milner and, and the Ox and Curtis Jones and Keita as well all do a job. But if you want to win the Premier League and the Champions League, you have to have players that are more than capable of doing a job. So I would have thought they would have signed a, a player anyway. 
But it's just a little unfortunate that when you start with seven and yeah. already after one game, you're down to four. That's well, not, you, you, you can't. You just don't know that's coming. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.